Strong and gusty winds across the north, northwest and in western coastal areas. Lowest temperatures of 1 to 5 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. The Football Show on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same-day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. I prepared to end it my can. Well, do it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Now then, here we go, football show. Just kicked off in Paris uh, two minutes ago. PSG won Manchester United 2 on the evening. Next goal, Kenny. It's big. It's big, you know. Not that Kenny needs any ego massaging, says Damo and Fingless, but his mention of boxing training as a kid reminded me of him first going to Millwall. I had played against Kenny for Tolka Rovers under 17s just before he left for Millwall. Pat, I can't recall his <laughs> surname, was his home farm manager. Pat Moore. Pat Moore. <laughs> And he says, Vinnie Arkins was in the same team. And Pat was a Millwall scout, if I remember correctly, asks Damo. Is that right? Well, I thought about Millwall scout. He, he kind of recommended me to, uh, to Millwall, kind of pushed me in that direction, yeah. Okay. Kenny was a uh, fullback then, right fullback. Is that right? Uh, no, I played centre half. Damo, you've got me. more wrong than right Yeah, here, yeah, he's worse than me in terms of memory retention, yeah. Anyway, says uh, Damo, that summer the word coming back was that in pre season Kenny was beating all comers in the long runs within the Millwall squad. What a man. Is that right? Were you fitter than some of the Millwall boys when you went over? Uh, yeah, no, I, wouldn't, yeah, I could. I was, I was a little bit, yeah, I could yeah, Forrest Gump. Maybe. No, until I couldn't. I, I'd no, so I'd no turn of speed, but I could run forever. Yeah, I could literally. Yeah, lungs. I'd lungs on me. So, yeah, but no, no physique. I mean, that's that, that's indicating I was over there. I was, you know. He says you're beating Charles the Atlas. That yeah. certainly wasn't Smashing the case. Them. Smashing them. <laughs> Not at all. I wish you'd no turn of sp- sp- speed. So how did you develop even a smidgen of a? Well, turn I didn't. Speed? I, I, I know. did a bit though. No, I, I didn't, to be honest with you. I, I very, obviously, my physical condition improved, but that's a very difficult thing to improve, Joe. You know I mean, it's true. And, and to be honest with you, I, the, in terms of physical condition, then there wasn't the amount of knowledge and information in terms of what you needed to be doing with your body. So, you know, a lot of wasted energy, a lot of wasted hours in the gym doing the wrong stuff and all that, Lark. But, but you look good. <laughs> Damon, that's a big stretch. Big stretch. Uh, Poor old Frank Lampard with uh, the spikes his dad made him wear and doing sprints from the age of about 10. That's how Lampard tried to get even just a tiny bit of pace, even he struggled for pace. So yeah. Frank Sr. bought him some spikes and after training every day, he'd have to go out and do his sprints. Such a difficult thing, you're talking about small oh. percent, and, but the amount of barriers you've got to put in, in terms of like aerobic capacity, that can be a little, that's easier. But in terms of kind of, um, yeah, the kind of you know, anaerobic, whatever you want to call it, like mm. that, that turn of pace, and it's not, it's the not amount like of you've got to put in to get that tiny sm- game. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. It's not like Frank Lampard ever became lightning. He was probably no. just a bit better than he would have been. So anyway, for people tuning in, it's been a really interesting game at the um, Parc de France this evening. It's PSG 1, Manchester United 2. Quick summary for those of you who have somehow missed all this. United started off brilliantly on two minutes. Lukaku pouncing on a really bad pass across the PSG back four. And then the story for the next 25 minutes or so was just how much of a disaster Eric Bailly's evening was turning into. He was at fault for the goal. Uh, Bernat tapped in. Bailly was very much in his heels. But more so than that, he was just being exposed badly down the United right-hand side. Bailly was playing it right back tonight in a 4-4-2. Ashley Young at times was coming back to help him, but they were never really on the same page. And about 36 minutes in, Dallow came on. Uh, Bailly gave it the all. Oh, I'm injured as he limped off, but... He knew, we knew, everyone knew, and uh, he limped off, and Dallo came on, and been, you know, it's been fine since then, well, as fine as it can be against this PSG side. And then, Kenny, on 30 minutes, Marcus Rashford, is that kind of a strange game? In some ways, done some funny things. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know what you mean. Booted a free kick away at one stage and put a ball across the box that... But he keeps stepping great. up, that's what I like about yeah. him, Joe. Even all through his career in Manchester United, he's been beaten down even by Jose Marino at times, yeah. mentally very strong, that young fella. Keeps stepping up, wanting the ball, even when maybe things aren't going uh, happening for him, which they aren't tonight, mm. still wants the ball, still wants to make th- uh, things happen. Well, on 30 minutes, he sent a little pinger, a little Janino laces mover in the air at the keeper, and Buffon spilt it. And in fairness to Lukaku, just like he gambled on the pass after two minutes, he gambled on the Rashford shot on 30 minutes and he finished again. So Lukaku with both goals and 
he's done very well this evening in fairness Kenny he really did gamble on both those yeah again and, and anticipation um, generally speaking in those situations the centre defenders they're looking at their goalkeeper expecting him to make the save and generally you would expect the forward to be show a little bit more anticipation there just take a gamble as all coaches will tell them you know, uh, even one time out of five, it'll spill, and there's your chance, there's your goal at the top, and which is exactly what he did. And suddenly, here we are, next goal crucial, and both sides look like they could concede. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. But it's interesting, like, it's not cagey in terms of both uh, teams standing off each other. No. You know, PSG, the mentality seems to be we need to score. And, and Manchester United almost, we can score. You know, it's not as if they're retreating into their kind of shell. Mm. And, and hoping for that uh, uh, toward a goal. It, both sides almost as if they, they both fancy their chances. Just a brilliant tackle there, actually, we say, from Manchester United. I would put it to you, there's been a real energy about United this evening, out of possession. I mean, on the ball, obviously, they're trying to do things, but out of possession, they're trying to get close to BSG players. Uh, Fred's been you know, working really hard. We haven't yeah. seen much of him. But right across the pitch, there has been an energy about them off the ball. And I do remember at Old Trafford, several times you were looking at United saying they're yeah. too passive out of the ball. That hasn't been the yeah. case tonight. That's probably been the only time under Solskjaer, uh, Joe, that kind of, particularly that second half against PSG, it looks as if they lost their confidence uh, a little bit. Mm. But generally speaking, all Jordan Solskjaer's reign, that's been pretty obvious in terms of the energy levels, getting around the pitch, even in terms of moving the ball quicker, you know, one, two touch and getting up the pitch. And certainly you're right out, possess the ball, getting close to the people, hunting them packs, you know, forcing mistakes, playing at a higher intensity. That's been evident for the last uh, couple of months. And certainly is tonight despite the obviously players who are missing, mm. that kind of collective spirit and the kind of determination and yeah, we're going to run for each other, we're, we're going to help each other out, we're going to make tackles, we're not going to make it easy for this PSG t team. And sometimes you just get a sense during the game, first 20 minutes, half an hour, mm. well, this just could be our night. That bit of a feel-good fact, which wasn't there in the first leg, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Almost been flipped on its head a little bit. Yeah, it really is amazing. Uh, Champions League, these two legged ties home and away, uh, just so interesting. The other game, by the way, just to keep you updated, Roma, as things stand, are going through. It's one all on the night in Porto. Kenny, Nick McCarthy will be in Dublin tomorrow. He'll unveil his squad to face Gibraltar and Georgia in the opening two Euro 2020 qualifiers. <coughs> we have asked you to take a look yeah, at the Yeah, I wasn't totally happy with this, I've got to be honest with you. What's wrong with you It was done on the duress. All right, we won't do it then. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm what? happy to do Sorry, it. I'm, what? No, no, what? I'm, I'm happy to no, do no, it. No, no, it's fine. I understand how this game no, works. No, 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 we don't have to do it. No, it's just so many kind of pairs. Oh, PSG have scored! PSG have scored. Di Maria. Oh. The best forward. Jeez. Oh, offside. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even need the VAR. Offside. Oh, is he indicating he was told on, the, on his earpiece or had the linesman flagged or has he been told by VAR? It was disallowed pretty quickly, though, wasn't it? He wouldn't have thought that information would have come down. Seen a replay. Definitely offside. Yeah, definitely offside. Have a look at the lines on the far top. top. So what's happening now is off he's flagging. offside. Yeah, so the lines are being told, don't flag, because if you flag and you get it wrong, we're dead. We're going to get murdered here. So keep your flag down. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And then we'll review. put your flag a little bit. So people are just going to have to get used to this. Yeah, it does ruin the moment a bit, though. Pretty quickly, the referee got the word because he was clearly offside. It was a, a, just a fantastic flick through from Mbappe, just a touch and uh, put yeah. it through. And it was a really good finish from Di Maria. He wasn't, no, he was offside. Yeah. Dinked it over De Gea. A let off for United. PSG won, Manchester United 2. So what's that you're saying you actually do want to do your team? No, no, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be uh, flying the ointment, as they say. <laughs> okay. no, I think it's interesting. I am excited Quote, about unquote, under duress. Here's Kenny Team. <laughs> so what we asked you to do was I appreciate there's some injuries going into these two games, but just with a view to Mick kicking off this campaign, let's assume for a second everybody is fit, which I know won't always be the case. Everybody's fit. What would Kenny's team be? Now people who are streaming on Facebook and YouTube can now see your team, but people listening on the radio Oh, right, you want me to give it? a thing. So just for the radio audience, yeah. take us through each line. Let's leave up the team out there and the whole way through. Take us through each line and give us your thing. Yeah, Randolph and Golo right. set us up kind of 4-3-3, three, three, but kind of V-shaped in, in midfield. I'm not entirely certain how Mick will set us up. I have a feeling he might lean uh, uh, towards this, but because it's such an inferior opposition, he might just for the occasion, maybe 4-4-2, four, four, go a little bit more adventurous. But a back four for me, Seamus Coleman, uh, Duffy... 
Uh, Kieran Clark may, may not be available. That's the one issue, the left side of central defensive position. You could argue, I think, four or five players there. I just maybe everybody being fit, I still lean towards Kieran Clark, naturally left foot player, very comfortable taking the ball. Uh, into midfield from defensive uh, situation. I think they've looked reasonably comfortable together during the time they've spent together. So for me, Kieran Clack, just the edge. Who's next man in? Is it John Egan? Is it someone else? Uh, oh, for me, uh, uh, Richard Akio, uh, Kevin Long, uh, Daryl Lenehan for me, uh, as impressed there. John Egan, very... Because I saw Dan McDonald was in here on Saturday and they got him to pick his team. Yeah. And he had John Egan in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could literally throw a blanket over, but that's what I said, four or five of those okay. players. For me, almost a good feeling. One. Just that little bit of a natural balance, uh, left forward operating on that left side of the mm. centre half position. And Matt Doherty in, in a uh, left back, I think he, he can, he can he, he's comfortable in that position. And originally, that's where Mick introduced him into the uh, Wolves team. And I still think he, he can affect the game uh, from that position. Okay. Midfield three, people might say, bloody hell, deja vu. But this is the midfield three to play against uh, France a couple he, of years ago. I can hear you. This, can, this, this was it. French this was the way forward. Again. I know, but this was it. This was the, this was the, the way know. forward for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Robbie, Jeff Hendrick playing as two number eight. Uh, uh, Attack-minded players getting forward, contributing goals, assists. And James McCarthy, just that kind of counterbalance and that holding midfield position. That is still doable for me. James gets games under his belt, match fit, and I haven't given up on those two uh, okay. too often. Like I say. But what I would say, they're under huge pressure now because we've got Conor uh, Horahan scoring goals at uh, Aston Villa, uh, Alan Brown as well, and those two really pushing hard for inclusion in those advanced positions in midfield ahead of uh, uh, Jeff and Robbie Brady. Okay, so James McCarthy, Robbie Brady, Jeff Hendrick. Getting the yeah, band people back might together. say, well, what's no, changed no, no. there? But no, no. like I said, I don't think we've tapped into the potential. That looks like a happy balance for me yeah. in, in midfield. Like real tenacious, Robbie James, very tenacious, good ball playing players. Well, thought we can have the ball, hold the ball. Nobody can receive the ball in central midfield. These three can. Yeah. These three are comfortable. Ball can do it. They can get forward and impact the game. So that's look, an no idea where everybody fit. I still wouldn't haven't given up Jeff on Hen that little trio. Yeah, look, I have uh, Jeff Hendrick. I'm starting to wonder. I really am got to happen for Jeff again soon and there was a game recently watched a good hour of it and he just never wanted to get involved when there was anyone within 10 yards of him 15 yards of him he didn't want to get in the ball enough he didn't yeah. want to affect the game and you're looking at him thinking you tick so many boxes yeah. and attributes yeah but he's been thrown around the place we've played him as a 10 on the mound I don't see him as a 10 yeah. playing you know what I mean this was club on, level on, though, on the half turn a club yet but for me that's still potentially his best position so that's the midfield three okay and then up three is an in interesting one. People might think this is hard. Shawnee McGuire, I think, strong argument for him straight down the middle. But these two lads are probably wild cards. Uh, Robinson and Ronan Courts for me. As soon as I saw him play, first time I saw him play was for a Derry at Daily Mount Park just uh, a couple of weeks before he made his move to Portsmouth. And I watched him uh, during that game and thought, uh, this lad can play. He, he, he's got something physically imposing, could play off his left and right foot, torn a pace, played with a bit of personality. And he hasn't played much in an Ireland jersey, but a couple of times he's played, Joe, I've thought, yeah, this lad can really step up. Sorry, how is James McLean not in your Irish no, well, Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. It, a lot of people be saying, Ronan, of course, what are you talking about? He's only played a couple of cameos. It's got to be James McLean. But I think this lad, Ronan, of course, could be a surprise. But I've no problem with James McLean down that left-hand side. And I have absolutely no problem with Sean Maguire. But Robinson, for me, in an Ireland team in the last year, which has been really struggling, devoid of confidence, no, he's been not good. creating, yeah, yeah. he's really impressed. And he's versatile. Robinson can operate off either flanks and even play as a 10 if you want to play a different formation. I think potentially them two could very quickly establish themselves in the starting 11. I went to see Preston. Um, it was like a stag party thing um, during the season. And he was playing left of a three and he was yeah. the best player on the pitch. He was really, he was genuinely, yeah. he was really good. He could do a job there as well. And a 4 three, 3 3 was up yeah. top, left. But I just still don't think you can have an Ireland 11 without James McLean. I, like, I really you don't. Could easily, well, I like can't say you could easily have a, a, a Northern 11 with a James McLean, but you, you, I, I can't, I've seen these players play, and I'll, although James has proved himself over a longer period of time, he's done it, he's been there, yeah. got the jersey session, these people haven't. He's generally our top goal scorer. Yeah, my gut feeling tells me these, these two lads are, are, are ready from what I've seen, and they play together. Martin actually paired them together. I think it was the Northern Ireland game, the friendly game. They actually played centrally together and they actually interacted quite well, the two of them. Physically, they couldn't be. Ron, of course, was holding people off, strong arming people, dropping his shoulder, and he was linking up with Robinson for the small period of time they're on the pitch. And I thought, bloody hell, not, no fear here. 
with the, uh, with this lad. So I'll reserve judgment, but I just thought two wild cards for me. Kind of a doubt it, just in terms of pace, just to burn people. Predominantly a left-footed player. I know he's playing on the right, but I think those two players can flip. There's a lot of versatility now in terms of those uh, front three. Yeah. If, you think the, if you think the cross he put in for Aidan O'Brien against Poland on that right-hand side, checking onto his left, yeah. in swing and ball in. And when he received the ball and he opens his legs up, he's light. He's the quickest thing we have in the squad. Martin played him again as a number 10, back to goal. Didn't think it suited him. He looked a little bit lost. But when he plays in a wide area, and even as a number eight in, in Robbie and Jeff Hendrick's position, coming from a deeper position, facing the opposition goal, he's got space to run into. He can, he can frighten people to death. So for me, in terms of tapping into a bit of potential, Callum O'Dowd, there's actually more to come. So yeah, I could play it safe. I could throw James McLean, and that's not dis disrespect to James McLean, because like I said, been there and got the jersey. Could throw uh, James McLean very easily up there, uh, Shane Long, etc. But I think those lads, that front three, they could really surprise, but very quickly they could establish themselves and mix uh, starting 11. Wow. It's quite exciting. But it's great. I think it is exciting because there's great options. We're talking about Shawnee McGuire as well, Robinson Plague at different positions, Ronan Courts as well, real versatility. Carter Horahan, Alan Brown in midfield got goals in them. Oh, Robbie Keane's now, where's all our goals going to come from? Well, potentially there's goals going from Robbie Brady and Jeff Hendry. We've got to, that's what I'm saying. We've got to tap into that. But if they don't, the likes of Carter Horahan and Alan Brown are doing it. They're doing that at club level. They're scoring goals regularly. That's where the goals are going to come from. Ronan Courts, Courts looks to me he can contribute uh, goals. Callan Robinson, uh, Robinson as well. Mac Doherty's doing it from a wing back position from Wolves so Kenny if anything we have too many goals <laughs> well potentially the goals are there so I suppose that's mixed responsibility to tap into put a system in place which gets the best out of these players gets them into areas of the pitch yeah. where we can tap listen, into those uh, abilities that they have listen my friend you're a free thinker you're the only man in Ireland who doesn't have James McLean in your starting 11 and you've almost convinced me not quite but yeah, honest. but this is what I'm saying. This is why I've been looking forward to the games. Yeah. And, and this is why I just, I, 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 I can't be bothered to listen to people. Oh, we haven't got the talent. Oh, 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 I'm so de dejected and oh, I can't get enthused. Well, I can for the reasons that I'm saying, for those players and the options that Mick has uh, available to them. So don't start talking to me about who's not available and who's playing at what level and the dare to talent here and there. I, I, I'd rather talk about the players that we have got available to us and who, who are desperate to play and get the jersey uh, on their back and make a contribution going forward. And, and I'm really ho I'm really optimistic oh, yeah. these okay. two games and going forward. I really am. I think things can change very quickly uh, for us in a positive way over the, over the coming months. Okay, good. Well, hopefully. So that squad announcement is tomorrow. Mick McCarthy will be over in Dublin. It's still 2-1 to Manchester United in Paris. 65 minutes on the clock. No real chances in the last few minutes. It's, um, I would say, maybe starting to get a, uh, get a touch more tetchier. And, uh, there but was it's a, there open was a, enough, Joe, isn't it? No, it's it? still open. There were a few handbags there on the sideline yeah. uh, off the ball. But it's still very open, like just in the last few seconds. PSG pretty much went the length of the pitch and flashed one across the United yeah. box. And there wasn't much um, in the way of traffic for them getting the whole way up the pitch. So it's very open. Two back fours are a long way away from each other. There's lots of space in there. And now United are on the counter attack. So those uh, big spaces, end, Joe. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. down the size, the, the distance between the two, the, the back three, say PSG, and the Manchester United back four, big distances there, like for people to drive into with the ball. Yeah, I mean, both, they're both on the front foot. They're both pushing forward. It's almost like a nervous thing. It's, yeah. no, what do we do? You know, Man United, what we're two one up, but we still, we they need the third goal. Need the goal. Yeah, they need the goal. And then PSG. Look, the interesting thing is, as this goes on. If it stays like this, Manchester United have to go for broke and PSG know that a Man United goal, the closer they are to 90 minutes, is yeah. fatal. And that's the really fascinating Well, this is what I'm here. talking about in terms of the later it goes and the smaller that window gets yeah, for yeah, PSG. Yeah. PSG will have to drop. They'll have to drop back then. They'll have to just... They'll have to have every man behind the ball in the last 10 minutes. Well, that w may well be the case, yeah. And play players panic, You're nervous. All, that's when the decision-making comes in. Some players remain calm. You hope your more experienced players. Others may not. Yeah, it's true. Taking a short break. Football on Off The Ball Brought to you by Boyle Sports Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card You Couldn't Make It Up is News Talk's sassy Saturday morning comedy news panel show If you catch the eye of someone breastfeeding it's very hard to get that approval across with just a nod of the head you know, just really... <laughs> 
Thumbs up. Each week, a host of top Irish funny folk pull apart the stories making the headlines and reassemble them in a pair of surreal and downright silly performances. I thought what a better sanction might have been would be to be a hurling goalie for a week. <laughs> and work in a bank? Yeah. For free tickets to the recordings of You Couldn't Make It Up on Thursday evenings in Tramline in Dublin, just go to newstalk.com slash events. You Couldn't Make It Up with Pat O'Mahony in partnership with Tesco on News Talk. Retailers, don't miss out on one of the most important events of your year. Retail Excellence Retail Retreat and Expo City West Convention Centre, May 21st and 22nd. Retail is changing from digital disruption to Brexit. Find out what's coming around the corner from 70 world-class retail experts, including Anthony Hooker, President and CEO of Southeastern Grocers USA. Hear the latest trends and learn how to grow your business online. Partners to retail, get involved too. It's where you need to be. Book now for tickets and expo space at retailexcellence.ie. Liverpool Football Club, you'll never walk alone. And that's why we're supporting the Sean Cox Rehabilitation Trust. Watch LFC legends take on a Republic of Ireland 11 on Friday, April 12th at 7.45 in Aviva Stadium. Republic of Ireland 11 versus LFC legends featuring Robbie Keane, Robbie Fowler, Ian Rush and more. Friday, April 12th. Tickets on sale now from just €20 Euro for adults and €10 Euro for kids at ticketmaster.ie forward slash LFC. Please show your support and get your tickets today. For journeys unknown and new roads discovered, knowing wherever they take you, we'll have you covered. Insure your car online with Aviva and get 10% off. Get your quote today and find out more at aviva.ie. For car insurance, you're safe in the hands of Aviva. Acceptance criteria, terms and conditions apply. Subject to minimum premium of €280. Euro. Aviva Direct Ireland Limited is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Car insurance is underwritten by Aviva Insurance Ireland DAC. It can take just seconds to lose everyone you love. Seconds to see your life destroyed before your eyes. Hannah had a home and family once, but it was ripped away from her. No time to escape, no time to hide. The war in Syria taking everything away from her. But this Lent, you can help change the life of Syrians like Hannah. Donate now on trokera.org or call 1-850-408-408. Trokera, until love conquers fear. It's giving your teammates a lift to training on Saturday morning. Right, girls, everyone in? The Sunday kickabout in the park or a sneaky five-a-side after work. It's the Liverpool fan hoping this is going to be their year. Yes! As Coca-Cola, we're celebrating where everyone plays because we're a nation of super supporters. Share the passion. Coca-Cola, official soft drink partner of the Premier League. Business is changing, which is why at Ford, when we say our commercial vehicles are built for business, we mean it. Our new transit range is still tough, still powerful and always dependable. But it now has the brains to match its superior brawn. With an even wider range of innovative features, smart technologies and greater efficiency, it's designed to work as hard as you do. And with Ford Innovate driving better value, you can get 3.9% APR, a 5-year warranty and €1,750 Euro bonus on the new Ford Transit range. Your business deserves the best in the business. Choose Ford Transit, the future of commercial vehicles. Order now at your local participating Ford dealer and register by March 31st. Ford, go further. Terms and conditions apply. See Ford.ie for details. Free installation on all freestanding appliances. I like. Oh, just because I'm a glamorous international celebrity doesn't mean I don't like a good bargain, you know. Washing machines, dryers, fridge freezers, dishwashers. Get free installation on all freestanding appliances right now. They'll even take away your old one for free. See the full range and shop now at appliancesdelivered.ie. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Keep up the guns up the guns the Ajax naar de kwartfinale van de Champions League. 
72 e minuut. Lasse Schöne trapt. Trapt! Oh, nee! Lasse Schöne in de 72 e minuut! Lasse Schöne met zijn specialiteit! Yeah, so they're pretty excited, as you might imagine. David Winner is on the line, author of Brilliant Orange, the neurotic genius of Dutch football. They are very happy, David. Uh, they sounded a bit depressed to me. This was uh, obviously a bad performance from Real Madrid in many respects, but that would be taken away yes. from what was a brilliant performance by Ajax. I mean, a genuinely uh, signature, traditional, brilliant Ajax performance. They were sensationally good. Yes. I don't disagree with the word of that. I was watching the game actually with um, a Spanish friend, Alejandro, who's a, a Real Madrid fan, and he was, he was sort of moaning, not with pleasure, all through the game. And just, just, I was kind of seeing it through his eyes a bit, that he, it was all about, you know, how, how much of a mess Real were and how much they were missing Ramos and all of that. But it was brilliant from Ajax. I mm. thought they were, you know, it was, it was rekindling memories from more than 20 years ago. It was. Uh, it was a great Ajax team in the mid '90s, and some memories before that as well. Yeah, it was sensational. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really seen Dusan Tadic play much football since he left Southampton, but that is a different Dusan Tadic. And I was wondering, is this just what he does now? But even he said after the game, "I'm pretty sure that's the best match I've ever played in my life." <laughs> well, it looked it. It was unrecognisable from the from the Southampton guy. Um, he and uh, Hakim Ziyech seem to. Have formed a really sort of telepathic bond almost immediately. Mm. Um, it said that, you know, the first time they trained together, it was there. And it was in evidence last night. And then Dad Tadic, some of the stuff he was doing, the, the little uh, pirouette before the assist for the second goal, was extraordinary. It was Maradona-like. Remarkable. Yeah, it was one of those evenings. So, like, not to ask too broad a question, but how has this happened <laughs> is um, is one of the initial thoughts we've all had. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 talk to us about this season. I mean, was this performance coming? Uh, they they absolutely outplayed Madrid in the first game mm. and were were done by a very odd piece of refereeing and bad luck, and then in the end, a bit of naivety and bad finishing. It was all a, all a combination of all those things. But uh, you, I mean, it was clearly the better team in Amsterdam. And then Ramos getting himself booked because he arrogantly thought uh, he didn't need to play in the second leg. He was saving himself for the quarterfinal. Um, clearly unhinged the, the Madrid defence and they're in all sorts of trouble anyway. And nobody, nobody in Amsterdam expected that, mm. nevertheless. And um, if you'd asked at the beginning of the season, nobody would have been certified. It would have been a, an absurd thing to predict. Yeah, uh, much the same as has happened with the with the national team. This time, well, round, not even this time a year ago, the round World Cup time, all the talk in Holland was, you know, how far they've fallen. We'll never get back. Um, you know, look at Belgium romping to the to the semi finals in the World Cup. We're nowhere near that. And suddenly, both the national team and and Ajax. And there's always been, you know, a very strong correlation between the two. If Ajax has a great team, then then the national team is good mm. uh, very soon afterwards. And it's all happening in, you know, at double speed. Very strange. Yeah. Why is it happening? Uh, part of the reason, I think, is um, they were able to hang on to some key players mm -hmm. who would, uh, in normal circumstances, you know, the last 10, 15 years would have would have ex you'd have expected to leave. And in fact, only, the only guy who really uh, mattered who left at the beginning of the season was Justin Kleiber, son of Patrick, who was considered a you know, great talent, but who more or less disappeared into the Roma reserves. And David Neres came in instead, and he's better. And they signed Tadic, and Ziyech didn't, didn't leave. And uh, De Ligt, who... Was in. He was the sort of seemed to be the junior partner in in that team that went to the Europa League final two years ago, and he when he was only seventeen, and he's matured, still only nineteen, or so, um, and he's become one of the the great young prospects in any position in the, in the world. Yeah, and so uh, he's maturing at an extraordinary rate, and you've suddenly got a kind of 
nucleus of not quite uh, not quite callow, they're sort of a little bit matured. And then on top of that, you've got Daily Blint, who's now been around a bit, uh, Tadich, who's having this sort of wonderful Indian summer, uh, Lassis Scherner, who's I think 30 now. So you've got a nice blend of ages and experience. And they're playing in this very aggressive, there's sort of two schools of, of uh, Ajax play. There's, there's the kind of endless passing uh, Van Gaal model and the more Cruyffian pressing and aggression mm. and attack. And this is what that, this is what, uh, this is Cruyffian that we saw last night. It was amazing. Yeah, it was Cruyffian. And so, am I to take from that then that uh, very much the Cruyff way has won over the Van Gaal way at Ajax now? That is very much what they're implementing? Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. It's a more exciting brand of football, that's for sure. Today about, sorry? It's a more exciting brand of football, that's for sure. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> it had become a, a you know, sort of parody of itself, this um, endless possession to no great effect. Mm sideways passing all the time. Um, Frankie de Jong, was, who had an, also an extraordinary game yesterday, um, he very rarely plays a sideways pass. He's nearly always either running or passing mm. in front of him. Um, and he's maturing into an extraordinary player. Yeah, it was almost, um, <laughs> even as it unfolded in real time, it was almost tinged with a degree of worry or sadness because we know De Jong is obviously going, uh, De Ligt is living up to his billing every time he plays on this stage. And right before your eyes, as you were enjoying the performance, you were also uh, looking at which players would be stripped for parts uh, pretty much in the summer. Uh, there's probably that horrible fear that this might be as good as it gets for this group. I think it probably is, yeah. I mean, we'll see. it's not a great... There's no outstanding teams in the competition and if they can do that to Real Madrid, I think they could possibly go all the way. It's a, it's a very, very long shot, I'd have thought. But the yeah. people are beginning to think that. Um, but after that, like the 95-96 team, it will be broken up for sure. Mm. But it will come as less of a, a shock. You know, the, the Ajax, in a way, never really recovered from that um, until now. They are, are expecting it and they're not, not going to be too bitter about it. And they point, for example, to um, Donny van der Beek, who had a terrific game again yesterday, mm. who is kind of only in the team because David Klassen, who was the captain and, and one of the focal points of the 17, two years ago team, the, the Europa final, because mm. he left, that meant that, that uh, van der Beek could uh, develop in a way that he probably wouldn't have done if, if Klassen had stayed. Klassen's proud story at Everton is a... Uh, is, a, is another matter. But yeah, no, everybody's expecting uh, them to go. Yeah. yeah. At least two or three or four of them to go. Ten Hag even um, made an interesting point about the way the club are developing players now, that they've had to recognise that they have to work faster with players, that players aren't even staying in Dutch football, the best players, until the age of 23 or 24. He said they're leaving at 20 or 21. So at 18 or 19, they need to be ready to play in the first team, is the point he made. And, you know, De Ligt came through as a 16-year-old. So that, that's part of the, the way at Ajax now, is to get them playing younger and younger. Overmars is the director of football. Uh, van der Sar is CEO and he's marketing director. In the absence of Cruyff now, he's been obviously um, deceased a couple of years. In the absence of Cruyff, who's the real driving force behind the development of the latest batch of Ajax players? Uh, it's more Overmars than, than Van der Sar. And don't over, over egg or over sentimentalize the, um, the Ajax Youth Academy role in this. Because okay. I think only four of the team last night are from uh, the two comps, uh, which is the name for the, the Ajax Youth setup. Yeah. Um, so Mazraoui, um, Daily Blind, who also had that fell away. Uh, De Ligt, of course, and uh, Donny van der Beek. That's that's it. All the others were kind of bought in either very recently or not so recently. Uh, Frankie de Jong, for example, he he grew up at Willem II. Yeah. Willem II, you know, which is um, not a fabled academy. And he's he's the most talented of the lot to a degree. And it's also, you know, we, we forget that when Cruyff came in and... and took over 
in 2011, there was practically blood on the on the on the streets. It was absolutely a bitter, terrible experience for everybody at the club. A lot of the, a lot of the coaches who he despised, but were actually rather good youth coaches, went elsewhere, and some are arguing that it's it's not because of Cruyff, it's despite Cruyff, you know, that the, the youth system has taken years to recover, in effect, from that revolution. Um, so, you know, the great the great legend of the of the Ajax youth system. Be a little bit cautious of that. It's part of it, but it's not it's not the factory uh, that, that producing geniuses that we like to think it is. Okay, so are, are they almost just hoovering up the best underage talent in the country? Yeah, that's part of it. But there's also, I mean, uh, Neres is, is from Sao Paulo. He's Brazilian. Yeah. Um, Lasse Schoen has been around a lot. Uh, Tadic, who was, the, who was the sort of main man last night, he has really no uh, no connection with Ajax mm. before this season. Mm. Um, so he, I think he was at he was at Groningen and NEC, can't remember. But he was, um, yeah, so it's not, it, it, partly because the Ajax method went out into the rest of Dutch football and everybody copied it. Everybody started playing 4 3 3 That became the Ajax way, became the national way. Mm. Um, and, yeah, uh, uh, Ten Hag himself, has, you know, he, he spent time at uh, Bayern and at Utrecht. So he's, you know, it, it's, it's not only, you know, this genius factory in Amsterdam. Yes. It, it, it's more complex than that. Yeah, fair point. And they are also, they have loosened the purse strings to a degree. They are paying a bit more in terms of wages, which, uh, you know, let's not understate the importance of money in all this. Yes, yes. So um, that's Overmars doing, that they had this sort of a 1 million euro a year cap. And they've relaxed that a bit. And, and, and the main people, Ziyech, uh, Tadic, uh, De Jong, I think, uh, will be earning uh, you know a fair bit more than that, and that was part of the reason that the, the, the parts of the team stayed together for this season. Um, Rory Rory Smith had a nice piece in the New York Times about a, um, Ten Hag sitting sitting seven of the main players down and showing them a video of old stars and saying, "You're like this guy, you're like that guy." Um, they didn't leave immediately, mm. you know, when they were nineteen or twenty. They stayed for a bit, and they. It helped them and it helped their careers and it helped them become better players. Um, like, you know, Bergkamp, Cruyff, Van Basten were all solidly into their 20s before they left. Yeah. And uh, some of the guys who've gone very young have not flourished elsewhere. They've had sort of mediocre careers or, or, or rubbish careers and been forgotten about. So um, they're adapting all the time to its very harsh financial situation. The economic mm. reality is that they're a very in in the Europe, you know, compared to the big leagues and the big clubs, they're very small financially, small. So they have to sort of uh, duck and dive a bit. Yeah, of those uh, younger players that uh, Ten Hag sat down and showed videos to likening them to legends, I think Cliver Jr. was the only one of that group that did depart. And as you say, you know, it's not like he's lighting things up in Rome just yet. It is difficult to, to make a move and flourish instantly. Uh, that said, De Ligt looks like he's capable of flourishing anywhere, uh, frankly. Is there any um, obvious line on where he's most likely to end up at this stage? Or is that no, still everybody very much thought open? he was going to Barcelona. And that seems to be on the back burner again. Right. We don't know. Uh, he, was, he was linked with PSG uh, not so long ago. Oh, that also is, don't go there. I, I don't know. I mean, he, the world is his oyster. Yeah. And I hope he doesn't get a PSG. I no. think that would be a, a mistake. Um, if, he, if he'd like to come to Arsenal, I say come to, I have no connection with them. But I, you know, that'd be, that'd be welcome. <laughs> it won't happen. Yeah. Uh, money tends to talk. And I guess, you know, they're bringing in all this young talent and it's not just Dutch talent. And ultimately, it has to be knitted together in some way. So how highly do we rate Ten Hag? As you mentioned, he was at um, Bayern with their reserve side for a while and Utrecht. And he spent some time with Guardiola at, um, at Bayern. Uh, like, is he a, he's clearly a disciple to some degree or other of uh, Cruyff, but he, he's doing a good job. Yes, well, he's terrific. And um, he, he was unheralded, rather unknown, even not terribly well-known around Holland, even. Right. 
and he's um, he's sort of crept in under the radar and, and making a name for himself. He, I mean, I, in due course, or n- not very due, it, it, he'll probably be poached by somebody as well. Mm. Um, Peter Boss, who was kind of, go back two years, this is practically Peter Boss's story. That, you know, that he, a coach that wasn't hugely well-known came in and transformed what seemed to be a quite average group of players and laid the basis really for what's happening now. Mm. And then he fell out with Dennis Bergkamp, who at the time was very powerful at Ajax. Um, Bergkamp and then uh, the, the Peter Boss left, went to uh, Dortmund and uh, someone, but quite soon afterwards, Kaiser, Marcel Kaiser and Bergkamp, who was his number two at that point, uh, were sacked because uh, they, they fell out Bergkamp had fallen out with his old teammates um, over Mars and Van der Sar. And um, yeah, so he's he, he's come in, he's repaired the, the damage that was done by that period. Um, there was also a tragedy in the, in the summer of 17. Um, Api Nuri, who was this, this very talented young guy who had a heart attack and then um, brain damage. Um and he was very popular and, and, and much loved in the in the club, and his you know life was nearly over. He's, he's, uh, he's in hospital now permanently, and uh, and that hung like a great shadow over the club as well for a while, and, and, and dampened the mood. And, and, and suddenly we're, we're we're where we are now. It's odd, yeah, and happy, happy surprise for everybody. Yeah, it sure is. There was something romantic about seeing Ajax back and doing it on a European stage at the Bernabeu. I think everybody was enjoying it. I guess one of the, the kind of interesting questions is how sustainable this might be. Are Ajax, and you may not have a simple answer to this, it's not a simple question, but are Ajax uh, back to a point where they can lose the really outstanding talents like De Ligt and De Jong here and there, and yet maintain some kind of presence in the knockout stages of the Champions League? Are they, are they back to a point, if the, if the Cruyffian revolution was around 2011, have they got to a point now where it's some way sustainable and they can withstand to lose the really great talents here and there and still uh, be in our lives in the knockout stages? That's, that's kind of what we're all interested in, I, I suppose, at this juncture. We, we don't know. It looks unlikely. Right. I, I would expect, you know, if they, uh, assuming they, they, use, they lose the leg, it's going to certainly go... Frankie de Jong. Um, I would imagine Tadic might stay. Diech might stay. Um, th- there isn't an obvious production line of super talent coming through. Uh, it's still less than you know, super talent mature enough to, to, to perform as well as this yeah. at this level. Uh, though I'm told that the, roughly the 15-year-olds, another sort of three, four years, there's some, some phenomenal players coming through at that at that age. Um, I I'm proud to have to say that I, I don't expect this to be repeated next season. Okay, we'll enjoy it while it lasts. Listen, David, thanks for your time. Yes. Uh, as you might imagine, there's plenty of fans in the office of Brilliant Orange and your other book, so it's great to have you on. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> that was David Winner speaking to us earlier on. It's 2-1 to Manchester United. They need another goal. At the moment, we're having a VAR, which may be a Manchester United penalty. That's as succinctly as I can give things to you. He hasn't got the ball to give this penalty. Is it going to be a penalty for Manchester United in the 91st minute? No, he's not an idiot. Referee is over there. No, he's now Phil. He's not going to give this penalty. shot and there's a hand that sort of goes out. Does it hit the knee I don't think it does. His his left hand is up in the air in a natural position. If it hits his left hand, it's a penalty for me. His right arm, for me, is in a a reasonable position. It's in a natural position. It's Kimpepe. Yeah. Kimpepe. The shot comes in. Oh, it's difficult. He turns his back slightly and his hand goes up. It is probably in a natural position, but he makes his arm bigger. Here comes the referee. What is the decision going to be? Oh, he's giving it. Has he given the penalty? Has he given the penalty? Penalty! It's a penalty for Man United in the 91st minute! <laughs> Can I, do I have to go to an outbreak or no? Oh my God. 51-30. Is that going to get us to the penalty? Oh. oh no. I just can't go to an outbreak. Oh my God, who's taking it? Manchester United have a penalty! 
to go through to the next round. Gotta be Rashford. Oh, uh, who's be taking Rashford. it, Kenny? Gotta be Rashford. Kenny, who's taking it? Gotta be Rashford. He's it is. Up it's going to be Rashford. Rashford's down at the oh penalty spot. This lad. <laughs> oh, he's cool. Oh my goodness. Oh, I tell you, Luke Shaw's walking up to him. But there's no way he's taking that ball off him. Luke Shaw, <laughs> step away from the penalty area. You turn around and keep on going. This is amazing, the VAR. I oh. mean, for me, that's not a penalty, but this is how it's kind of subjective, the VAR. The referees look at it, he's in We've talked to VAR lately, sod all that. Rashford, Kenny, what's he going to do? Keepers right, whip, <laughs> real pace. Oh. Oh. The PSG uh, players are disgusted. They're obviously over at the referee. That's the delay at the moment. Thiago Silva is over with the referee saying, Distraught. you are kidding me. You are kidding me. I thought that referee, PSG and the home turf. No chance. How influential, powerful that club is. Yeah. Boom, the penny would drop. Ooh, do I really want to give this penalty okay, against them? Okay, here we go. It is Rashford against Buffon. Think what age Rashford is. Oh. Rashford has spent his whole life watching Jean-Louis, Jean-Luigi Buffon be the yeah. best keeper, one of the best keepers in the world. And now Marcus Rashford's right. facing Buffon. I've got to tell you something now. I made this point off very, didn't I? Not, not in relation to this, this penalty. Have a look at the amount of people that encroach. In the box. Yeah, so if Marcus Rashford pushed his ball and hopefully we're all hoping he scores, let's count the amount of Manchester United players that are inside the box. The area. I'm going to watch be. where the ball goes. And let's see if they var it. Let's see if they var it off the ball. Oh, hurry up, Rashford. We've got like, three ad breaks to take. He's taking his steps back. Keepers right. He's, he's got to be keepers right with pace. He's uh, just outside the penalty area. Players are all ready to sprint. Rashford's gone to his left. He's sprinting up. Little small steps. He scored! Marcus Rashford scored. Manchester United through the knockout stages. Off the ball on News Talk. In Thursday's Irish Independent, don't miss exam brief in partnership with Yates College, your essential two-part junior search exam guide. We explore each subject in depth with advice on study techniques, exam answer strategy and timings. This week in part two, we cover maths paper two, science, business studies and geography. Only inside Thursday's Irish Independent. Take a fresh look. Irlande, you have taken France into your heart. Our wine in your restaurants, the fashion in your stores, and the Renault Capture is on all your boulevards. You do realize who will become your nearest EU neighbor? Oui? Ooh la la. Uh, thanks for that, France. No wonder the Renault Capture is Ireland's best-selling small SUV ever. Book a 24-hour test drive at your local Renault dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. See Renault.ie. Whether your staff love watching TV dramas in the daytime at the office or need to get away from the office drama with a bit of daytime TV, if they watch it on a TV, then you must have a TV licence. It's the law. That's just one of the terms and conditions of life in Ireland. Other terms and conditions may include possessing extensive knowledge of every conflict in a small fictional town on the Australian coast or doing your best to avoid the latest conflict in a small office in Sligo. No matter what you watch and where, if you don't have a TV licence, it's our business to know your business. So get yours at tvlicense.ie or at any post office. Brought to you by the Government of Ireland. Just 30 minutes from Dublin lies the K Club, Ireland's premier golf resort and the perfect location for your next golfing escape. Experience luxurious accommodation and play two Arnold Palmer designed championship golf courses. Swing into action. And book your golf break today at kclub.ie. This Irish success story is brought to you by Guaranteed Irish. Did you know that Kingspan, global leaders in energy efficient buildings, employs over 10,000 people across five continents? A global company with local roots, Kingspan also supports over 900 jobs in Cavan. Guaranteed Irish helps you support companies that are altogether better choices for our communities. So, look out for it. GuaranteedIrish.ie. All together better. Hi, I'm Stuart Martin, Super Value Store Owner. All things considered, Super Value is the place to fill your trolley with great offers like Super Value Fresh Irish Leg of Lamb, half price. Buy one pancake mix and one spread for only €4. Euro. And buy any six bottles of wine and save €10. Euro. All things considered, it's Super Value. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. Free installation on all freestanding appliances. I like. Oh, just because I'm a glamorous international celebrity doesn't mean I don't like a good bargain, you know. Washing machines, dryers, fridge freezers, dishwashers. Get free installation on all freestanding appliances right now. They'll even take away your old one for free. See the full range and shop now at appliancesdeliver.ie. Off the ball. 
This, this is News Talk. Six minutes, 37 seconds of out of time and counting. Paris 1, Manchester United 3. It's 3-3 three, three in aggregate. United going through and away goals. Rashford with a penalty and out of time. A VAR penalty, which we are discussing here during the ad break. Very harsh decision. PSG in the United half, on the attack. United have everyone back. Chong is defending for United. That's right, the 19-year-old who's never played before. And he's out there. PSG have had a few chances since Rashford has scored, by the way. Uh, they're on the edge of the area now. They're just trying to pick a moment to try and either dink across in. They've dinked it in. Um, and it bounces and it goes out for a kick out. And that must be it, surely. Neymar has come down to the touchline with his um, fancy clothes and cap and earrings and <laughs> startled expression. I mean, Neymar just can't believe what's happening. It's really I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's ever played in a... Successful. Oh, they're appealing for a penalty there. No, uh, go away. It's really good defending from Luke Shaw at the back post, just using his body, easing into Mark uh, uh, Mark Quinos, is it? Yeah. We've, Making uh, sure he can't get ahead of. We've got to say goodnight for this evening. OTBAM is back tomorrow, 7.45, all our social channels. Me and Kenny are going to stay on for a few minutes here on our social channels just to make sense of this game. And then uh, tomorrow night, Graham Shaw, Katie Taylor, John Giles, Dan McDonald all on the show. Tom Dunn is on the way. I, I can't go until it's full time. Do I go? I can't go. <laughs> Gotta stay. Tom Dunn's not gonna mind. Tom Dunn's not Tom Dunn won't mind. Under the circumstances. Under the circumstances. This is the biggest story around at the moment. Tom Dunn will not mind. Tom Dunn's out there watching it, JP. <laughs> the news. The news. The news is that Man United are in the ninth minute of out of time. Ninth minute of out of time, Kenny. What a great experience those two young kids have come on, Joe. If they can see this out, be part of the Manchester United team now. Chong in the ball now. Don't give yeah. it away now. Don't give it away now. Oh, he's oh. giving it away. Played it across. Here come Paris. Foul. Kick. Referee oh, needs to How long is he up. playing? Referee, blow this up. Eight and a half minutes. Oh, PSG have a free about 40 yards from the United goal. They're going to have everyone up. JP, it's your call. I, I, we can't. <laughs> I think, gonna I think they're going to score. I think they're going to score. We can't go. We actually can't go. Look, I'll take one uh, tomorrow. 15 I'll seconds. Take, we, this is too big a story. Seconds. This is we'll too know. big a story. 15 they're seconds. Eight minutes and 59 seconds of added time. This Here comes it. the free. Playing with oh pace. God, Headed clear by Lukaku, who was wrecked for the last half hour, by the way. <laughs> he hasn't run in about 35 minutes, Lukaku. It's over. It's over! Manchester United through to the knockout stages. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, we're staying on the air. We're on our social channels. Football, bloody hell. That is just remarkable. Kenny Cunningham and I have watched this game this evening, as I'm sure have most of you. Lukaku on two minutes, Lukaku on 30 minutes, uh, oh. Bernrat on 12 minutes, and then Rashford in the 94th minute. A penalty, Kenny. What but, did we say? Oh Mbappe, my goodness. Mbappe had that chance at 2-1. Went around the guy, tripped over his laces. Bernard followed up, hit the post. Yeah. What did we turn and say to each other? Destiny. F yeah, fate. I was just messing though. <laughs> it's happened, isn't it? And for the circumstances of how it's happened. I mean, it was barely a show for the penalty. Dalla, I think, was the only one who totally threw his hand in the air. Yeah. Appealing for the penalty. And have we got the screen grab by any chance? We do. Here, have a look at this, Kenny. So this is the penalty. This is what was called back. Uh, people will be watching on Twitter this evening. We'll get it up. So let's just leave that up for a few seconds. He's turned so for, his back to the yeah, shot. Yeah, so I think that's relevant when you, you turn your back. Whether you're facing the ball or your back to the ball, for me it doesn't matter, it's the position of your arm. I'm just describing the scene for people who didn't see it though. Excuse me, yeah, yeah, so, so that's it. So whether he's facing the ball or not facing the ball is irrelevant right. to me. It's the position of that arm which it, which it strikes. Yeah. Now you've made the point, or somebody made the point on there, well, is if, you, if, you make, if you make yourself bigger, it's impossible not to, if your hands are by your side, your hands are actually, your arms are stuck to the side of your body, mm. you're making your body bigger. Mm. So for me, that doesn't add up. It's more if it's in a natural position, if your arms are kind of hanging by your side yeah. in a natural position. And for me, his right arm there, which the ball strikes, that's a natural position for, arm to, for your arm to be. Yeah. I accept that. It's very, very close. Now, let's, let's just leave it up, actually. Let's just leave it up, Enda. 
It's if it hits his look at his left hand, you know, how wide that is. That's a, that's a penalty. That's an unnatural position. It's very very close to being in an unnatural position. His right hand. He's just just ever so slightly put it out. Yeah, but he hasn't extended it. You far. have a look at the bend in his elbow. It's not a straight straight arm, is it? It's, it's actually bent no, no, close no. to his. That's what I'm saying. So I take your point. If that's extended another six eight inches away from his body, yeah. yeah. But for me, at, at that point when the, when the ball strikes his arm. That is a natural position for me for his arm. I to couldn't be in. argue too strongly with you. I mean, but the referee's Com- overturned it. Compepe would say that is a natural position, but it's right on the line of being unnatural, and I can see that's why the referee. So has we given even it. take that argument, Joe, that it's right on the line. Yeah. For the ref to go and actually overturn his decision. Now he's seen that and he's given it as a corner kick. Yeah. Now the, the referee, the VAR referee, who's now refereeing the games, my understanding was referee referees the games and it's, it's his decision to uh, overturn it. The, the assistant referees looked at that. Is that a clear and obvious decision? This is how, mm. this is how the parameters are changing now. From initially, or oh, clear and obvious mistake, mm. referee have a look at it as a clear and obvious mistake here. Now to, oh, we're talking the ever so slightest, tiniest margin, subjective, I think it's a penalty, you don't. Yeah. Five referees would give that penalty, five referees wouldn't. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. It's just so surprising, the referees in Paris, yeah, but well, this is what we're talking. This is what I was saying. I just can't. I just he's can't had so much he time. Did. It's not an instinctive thing. He's he walked over to the screen. He knows what's left on the clock. Yeah. He knows the importance, the occasion, PSG, political power. I'm not going to get another champions. I'm going to be refereeing park football here. Yeah. If I give them my yeah. chest, yeah, 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 yeah. sure, that's a natural thing, human. But to be fair to him, look, if he genuinely think that's a penalty, good luck to him. He was brave enough to give it. Yeah. yeah. I give him the benefit of the doubt and say he genuinely thinks that's a penalty. But just as many referees I can guarantee would say no. That was not a penalty. I think that's true. And there is the added um, element, and people have discussed this before. You're the referee, you're being asked to come over and look at the VAR screen. What that is telling you as well is, I think it's a penalty. Yeah. So, you know, there's a big stage, and I'm literally the only person you can kind of confer with, and I think it's a penalty. I've called you over. That's an added extra element of, oh, like I'm going against the only person yeah. that I can that I can bounce this off is Mr. VAR. He thinks it's a penalty. That is just an extra yeah, little He's thing looked at all the angles. You're right. H- how many times do you see a referee, although it's been a limited amount of time, actually go over and disagree mm. with the VAR official upstage? Generally speaking, it's in agreement, isn't it? When we get that's it, the reason, and for the reason that you've said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a natural human thing. He's looked at the, he thinks it's a penalty. He's looked at all the angles. Mm. Oh, I've got to be careful here. Yeah. It'll be interesting when we get a decent sample size of incidents like this, what the percentage is of referees who turn over the VAR, who, who say to the VAR guy, yeah, I've looked at it, I'm, I'm not giving that, you're yeah. wrong. I agree with you. I think Reasonably it's be small. Maybe 10%, 1 in 10. Really 10, 20%, yeah, I think you're right, reasonably small. Yeah, we're looking at Solskjaer coming off the pitch now. But uh, don't get me amazing, wrong, absolutely amazing. delighted for uh, Manchester. Delighted for the supporters who went over there. The attitude of the players is absolutely spot on. The players missing, it didn't matter the attitude, the intensity that they played with, went to the May tackles, chased, Harry did, yeah. the, did the very best that they could. Players who haven't been playing, uh, disappointed not to be in the team, came in, showed the right type of attitude. The two young kids was a lovely touch, not saying he did it, we were taking the mic like, oh, he's, this is another like tick in the box, bringing, you know, integrating the young players on. <laughs> Bring on but, sharing them. Yeah, but it was great for those two young kids. What a Tight, feeling to be walking off the pitch. Chong. Tyth Chong came on with 10 minutes to go and then Mason Greenwood, who's 17 years of age, <laughs> came on for his debut yeah. in the 87th minute. And Rashford, I'm going to say it again. We spoke about him for time. He's not having the best you mentioned. He's not having the best. He's months, not. Yeah. But he still wants it. Yeah. He's still stepping up, taking responsibility. And no better example there. That penalty kick, what's at stake? Straight away, give me the ball. Because I was really thinking, and I'm sure Rashford has, has had a few moments like this in his career where he's playing against players that he's watched all his life. But like against Buffon, you know, who Rashford spent his whole life and Buffon's been one of the best goalkeepers in the world. To face him and score a penalty against him is just remarkable. We're seeing replays on the TV here of the uh, penalty incident as opposed to just the screen grab. I mean, it's really tricky. I mean, PSG are going to be livid, for sure. They can make a really strong argument against it. You talk about United, there was such a work ethic about them, as you said. Yeah. Off the ball, like, so many times there were players and they could have just stood there five yards off. No one would have said, what's he doing? But they really made a real effort to get yeah. in and try yeah. and nick a ball. The amount of times they nicked balls this evening. Yeah, forced mistakes, backed each other up. Didn't get it right at the start. Boy, he was mistaken. Then uh, Bailly. Right Where's back, Bailly right now? Would you say he's already <laughs> gone home? <laughs> Would you say Bailly flew home straight away? <laughs> 
Yeah, but look, they rectified it. You know, they rectified a big decision again, Solskjaer, and I think the team bended from They looked a little bit more cohesive after that. Uh, Ashley Young uh, right back and uh, Dalot. Didn't create a huge amount of chances and PSG with the team pushing in that second half, yeah. PSG should have put this game to bed. Well, Mbappe had it been on form, that game would have been over. The chances that he Neymar. had... Look at Neymar. Look at that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm delighted. Dumbfounded. Uh, both Lukaku's goals were okay. Great from him to chase things up, and he was wrecked for the last half yeah, hour. Ran himself but, into the ground. There were PSG mistakes when they analyse it tomorrow. Oh yeah, you know he created very little from open yeah. uh, from open play. And even that second half, I'm struggling to think of Buffon making a mistake. PSG were the ones who really carried mm. uh, uh, the biggest threat. That Mbappe chance uh, in particular. Horrible force touch, trying to go around the gate, and kind of slipped over. Smalling did well stu- then. Yeah, Smalling done well after that, but usually so clinical in those uh, uh, situations. Had an off night, Mbappe. It was interesting, Filippo Clare said to us, um, pre-match we spoke to Filippo Clare, yeah. just a little bit sloppy lately. Yeah, he's a little bit off it. Well, he carried that into the game this evening, it's cost his team. Because they did enough, weren't at the best PSG, but mm. they did enough, did enough to win that game. They're absolutely furious. This is just remarkable what's happening under Salzburg. The last two nights, Joe, we've come in, uh, <laughs> come in Monday, Tuesday, and you're looking at the fixtures last night no. thinking, uh, duds. Yeah. It's even tonight, oh, what are we going to talk about? And Here we ma- are at 10 past 10. Yeah, Ajax, the Ajax victory last night, and again, the, and Manchester United tonight, phenomenal. Well, gives, you, gives you great heart, football, you know what I mean? You think, you think you've seen all, you yeah, think, yeah, well... Yeah. There's, a certain, there's such a romance uh, about this Solskjaer story that is just very hard not to smile a little bit at. <laughs> Even you, hardened, grizzled, bitter. No, I just think it's great to see Manchester United. And look, I'm not a Manchester United sport. It's just great to see them play back, mm. playing at, at this level uh, for a lot of different reasons. You know, just in terms of the character, intensity, all the, the quality of football which they're playing on occasion wasn't perfect tonight. Yeah. Um, for Solskjaer, you have to give him huge, huge credit for being ruthless enough on 36 minutes and with a very inexperienced bench to use up a substitute so early and just say this Bai thing hasn't worked. I know you're, and you're saying Bai had a bit of a knock maybe 10 minutes before that which gave Solskjaer the out yeah. but I actually think it was getting to such a stage that he was going to take him off regardless. But 36 minutes, first half substitution when you already have a dodgy bench because of injuries to just say we have to do this. Yeah. That was really decisive management. Yeah, it could have easily left it. It would have happened at half time because then you're looking after the player. You don't want to public hum- hum- humiliate and bring him off. A reasonably see- a senior player, yeah. b- big money signing. So I-, I, can under- I can even understand that. But I think that him picking up that injury, I think that gave him the out, that made his mind. Do you up. not think he would have brought him off? Uh, I don't think so. No, I think okay. he might have left it at uh, half time. Okay. The fact that he got the injury, I think he was almost looking after the player. Boy, he knew the situation. He was really hamming it up. <laughs> Stay down, <laughs> Eric. He was trying Stay to save. It. He was trying to save a little bit of face, but it was the right decision because he was really struggling. Yeah. Uh, in that area of the pitch. Yeah, it's uh, fascinating. They're, they're rolling out all the referees now in terms of getting the second opinion in well, terms of what. And this, you're going you're gonna to hear conflicting views. I was from just going to say, types of referees. like, I still don't know what the right decision is there. Well, this, we're going to get plenty of this because it's subjective. Oh, VAR is not going black and white. We're going to get the decision. Well, the certain um, volume of um, uh, decisions that are subjective. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's how you see it. It's how each individual referee see it. sees it. How he interprets uh, the laws of the game. And some referees will interpret it slightly different see, than others. Isn't the issue with VAR, and I, look, let's, I, we won't dwell on the refereeing decision because ultimately that's the least exciting thing in many respects about what's going on here. But isn't the thing about VAR that it's meant to be clear and obvious? Is that still the rule or have they even changed yeah. that? Because yeah. that, isn't a, yeah. that is not a clear and obvious. If no, I agree def- with you. If you follow the letter of the law. Yeah, but that was rubbish for me for a start. That was rubbish. It's not a right or it's wrong. Mm. From the very least, they should never come out and say it at the start, clear and obvious. So what, if it is a mistake but it's not clear, then you don't, but well, that's ridiculous. If it's a wrong decision, yeah. give it. For me, at the very start, it should be, if it's the wrong decision, change it. Yeah. It's just as simple as that. Yeah. But in that, what we're looking at this evening, my, my personal opinion, I don't think it was a penalty. Yeah. I don't think it should have been uh, changed. Other people will. I take your point. I think it's. I think it's oh, marginal. It's it's that, yeah. It is. I think it is close, but it's not a penalty for me. It is uh, potentially for you. I wouldn't even. And vice argue, versa. I wouldn't argue strongly with you that you're that like it wasn't a penalty. I'm. I'm. I, I can just about see how it, there was just enough separation yeah. from arm and body to give it. But like, I really. I mean, I don't feel strongly about it. But it's odd. Do you, I just find that I don't enjoy that. It was. He took this shot. There was no real. There was no real uh, appeal. 
went to the corner kick and suddenly the referee, everybody stopped, well, what's happening here? Why is the corner kick yeah. referee, referee, oh, walking over. I that does, I don't, I'm, I'm not enjoying that. I know. That, People that. have said, imagine it's, uh, you know, imagine this kind of moment settles a World Cup final. This is a pretty big game here. It effectively settled this massive game and I, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm happy because no, I don't, I don't enjoy it. I'm yeah. telling you now, I don't know. I'm absolutely delighted that Manchester United uh, yeah. have gone through. Don't get me wrong. But in, in that kind of circumstance, how it materialised. Yeah. Like Manchester I, I United fans, Manchester United fans have to for a moment just imagine the roles were reversed and PSG won that way, they'd be horrified. Yeah, and that you've introduced this spectacle to the game, and I don't know. I mean, I'm delighted it happened for United tonight, but if PSG had won in that way, everybody would feel terrible. Yeah, for me, if it's irrelevant who it is. I, I just don't enjoy it. How the game was kind of uh, disrupted. We almost like parked the game for like a, a minute and a half. That was the oh. best minute and a half of the game. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Kenny, it was the most no. dramatic minute and a half of the game. I know we're kind of filling it time, we're all making it. No, come no, on, but in terms it was amazing. Of, it was amazing drama. In terms of the natural flow of the game. I know, but for that minute and a half, it was unbelievable. Kenny, no, it was wasn't. amazing. No, I'm it delighted was... we got to where we did in United, oh. true, but I didn't, that's not, I didn't enjoy that minute and a half. Did you not? No. Was it not some of the best TV you've seen all year? No, not with us commentating. No. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly wasn't. But no, I don't enjoy the game stuff. People, players are standing with their hands on their hips. You know, it's kind of sucking the air out of the house. It's like that slow puncture, isn't it? I mean, well, not not in this instance because it was so tense. If anything, they need to get sound effects in the stadium. That's a heartbeat. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's going to look. It's here to stay. It's going to get rolled in next year. Get ready. I tell you what. That penalty, I, I want to see that penalty again when it was taken. I want to, see, I want to check the, uh, the feet of every single Manchester United player and, and see if anybody had stepped inside that 18-yard uh, box stroke semicircle. Well, I would think so. I think had. that young boy... Well, this, what's this I'm saying? Sean. So listen, so you're going to have people screaming next oh, year. Kenny, they're into extra time between Porto and Roma. <laughs> he missed that. <laughs> oh no! Oh, if you were listening on the cares. radio tonight, we missed that completely. No, who cares? Who yeah, cares? Right. Who does care? No one cares. Oh, what a night if you're a Manchester United. You know, lads thinking, should we go? Should we not? The games. Uh, and those lads, those diehards, of course uh, we're going. It's Manchester United. We're going to support a team away. And to go there and get the reward that they did, what a night they're going to have in Paris this evening, those supporters. It's amazing. Uh, PSG fans can be a bit nasty, though, so they should be careful as well. Where does that rank in terms of Manchester United European nights? Where are we going back to? Best night since? Uh, Come on, I Kenny. think, well, yeah, you, can, you can go back your... How far are we going back? No, you're probably going back to the last... La you've ended in the group stages, but this is a bigger... It's bigger than that. So Trump's Oh, that. it is. You probably have to go back to the last European Cup. Is it United? You know, when? Of the Chelsea? Was it Chelsea? When they beat? In 08 on the penalties. I can't think of too many stand there. When does Ferguson, how long did he go after that? Well, he was there for a few years after that. But I just, I think the story tonight is the Manchester United team that turned up tonight. Yeah. Play, the, the score, uh, key players missing that bench. You couldn't get away from that bench, the kids. Can I give you the bench, bench again? Bench. Can I give you that bench again? It was Rojo, it was Dallow, it was Sergio Romero, it was James Garner, who we talked about a lot tonight. It was James Garner, it was Tahi. Chong, it was either Angel or Angel Gomez. I'm going with Angel. Richie thinks it's Angel. And it was Mason Greenwood, 17 yeah. years of age. I mean, literally when Mason Greenwood was coming on, Darren Fletcher on BT commentary was saying, uh, Mason Greenwood, of course, has scored 20 goals for the U team. <laughs> what? Well, that's, that's the story. <laughs> that's why it's such a great night. I think that's a, uh, that's a big part. Have you actually analysed the game, Joe, in terms yeah. of how well man, the quality of football which they produced? There wasn't a huge amount there. No. In terms of you know good quality ball retention, creating clear cut opportunities from general play, like you said, the goals were kind of two uh, two mistakes. Thanks. Don't remember too many chances apart from that. D but I I'm going to take it back. I'm going to mention we mentioned the, I mentioned it before. Solskjaer's comments leading up to this said on the radio uh, the breakfast show this morning, looking at the papers. His comment he set the tone for me 
the manager. It could have been so easy for him to come out this morning. Well, I'm not expecting a win here tonight. Mm. I've got the kids uh, yeah, on the bench. About injuries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Set that negative almost. We're going to lose, but this is why we're going to lose. Type. Don't blame yeah. me. Yes. But no, really upbeat. It's great. I'm point. looking for. I'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to this. I trust me players. We're going to go there and, and have a go. Who knows? It could be one of those yeah. planting all those little seeds in the minds of, the, of his of his players. So he was. So I give him great credit for that. Uh, Salt score. And then the players to show the attitude that they did. Yeah. Uh, you know, to stay in the game. Things were slightly going against mm. them second half. They overcome all those hurdles. Boy, he made the change and just stuck at it. Stuck in the game, kept believing, kept pushing, kept going. There's, great, the there's great footage of Solskjaer when the goal goes in. And he has this moment of disbelief on his face, puts his two hands in the air, and then starts screaming instructions on because he knows there's a few minutes left. It's just the most full, intense experience, I'd imagine. I'd say he just can't believe what has happened to his life. I mean, he is meant to be hanging out with the boys at Molde, watching this stuff on the couch. The United team again was De Gea in goal, back four, by that lasted 36 minutes, Smalling, Lindelof, Shaw, Pereira on the left wing, Fred in midfield, not bad Fred. Kenny, industrious. The Roy Fred. That's where 50 million gets you. Scott McTominay, good. Yeah. And then Ashley Young on the right wing, and then Lukaku and Rashford. I was asking you in the first five, ten minutes, because we all thought it was going to be three at the back. I wonder, did Solskjaer go with the 4 4 2? Partially because this group had never played together before, and there is an element whereby every player knows a 4 4 2 reasonably well, has a fair idea where they're meant to be. Yeah. And so it's easier for a new group to try and bed into a 4 4 2. Yeah, no, I, I can understand to say, I can understand why, because we said how, I, I, how ineffective you know, have play, been playing 3 5 2 under uh, Marino yeah. in terms of how much work needs to go in in, cha- in terms of that change of system. So, yeah, I can understand that totally in terms of, yeah, simplify the game, two banks of four, uh, two up front. The problem was, Boy, I think he knew you had to play him. Yeah. You put him on the bench with all the kids. It's almost humiliating the player by himself. I think Dalot, if they told me they're playing with a back four, I would have said, well, Dalot right back, Ash Young right back, Dalot on the right hand. Yeah. So I wouldn't have played Boy there. But I can understand the reasons in terms of why he did play him. But eventually he made the change. You're absolutely right. And, and they looked reasonably comfortable in, the, in their skin after that. Although it was PSG, for me, who were kind of met pushing and pushing and making the running. But they, they stuck it in there. The, the pattern of Small and Lindelof looks as if it's here to stay now. Mm. They look comfortable together. They defended in around the penalty box. Some good last ditch tackles got around each other, doubled up when they had to snuff out uh, danger. Luke Shaw, again, another very uh, impressive performance from him. So that back four unit uh, hasn't changed for a long period of time. It looks as if they're, they're benefiting from it, spending time with each other on the football pitch. And they just kind of hung around, yeah. took their chances, and hung around. That, and it's, <laughs> that's, that's football, isn't it? Football. That's probably all they could do with that team. Yeah, if yeah, Salisbury yeah. was talking with yeah. Carrick, he probably he said it, didn't he, before? Still in the game with 20 minutes to play. Yeah. And that's probably what it meant. The team he was putting on the pitch, just hang around, lads. Yeah. Hang around, don't give up. See what Stay happens. in it. Keep believing. Who, <laughs> who knows? I know better than anybody. This is probably the team talking before. I know better than anybody. Yeah. Miracles can happen. Yeah. It can happen tonight. Stay in the game. Keep believing. <laughs> They're going to win the Champions League. Oh, dear. Right, Kenny. Will we go home? Ah. Oh, you're buzzing. Kenny's not going to sleep tonight. He's not going to sleep. I'm buzzing. He's sleep. <laughs> let's go and get a bag of chips somewhere. Uh, John, let's, let's go and get a bag of, bag of chips. chips. Let's do oh something crazy. Let's do something crazy. <laughs> Salt and vinegar. Ah, uh, dear. That is just extraordinary. Okay. Um, I think we'll leave it there. So you're, I think you're back in in the morning, are you? No. No, I'm at home. Okay. You're at home. The lads will be all over this tomorrow morning, I'm sure. Uh, we'll still be talking about it on the show tomorrow. John Giles will give his tuppens worth. Apparently, Philippe Auclair is going to come back on tomorrow as well. <laughs> <laughs> Even just to review the French papers tomorrow will be oh. worth it. Oh, my God. I'd say Thomas Tuchel's looking at his phone nervously just now. How has this happened? So, jeez, uh, that was fun between Ajax and Man United. Kenny, Amazing. we did well. We did well. Yeah, always surprises it. Okay, we'll sign off. That's us for this evening. See you again soon.